that was founded uh, and launched about two years ago, and it is a messaging application for the enterprise. It is a messaging integration in, uh, application for work. Slack is where work happens. Uh, but today I'm not going to spend so much time talking about Slack, the product. And if, you, if you're not familiar with it, I apologize. But what I want to spend most of the time talking about is the Slack platform and the way it integrates with other systems and the way developers and engineers and product managers here in the audience can interact with Slack so that you can take advantage of the audience and platform that we've built. I'm on the finance team at Slack, but I work very closely with the platform and developers. And so um, I can definitely answer any questions to the extent you guys have any beyond this presentation. So with that said, let's dive right into it. So the mission of Slack is to make people's work lives simpler, more pleasant, and more productive. And Slack is a very mission-driven company, and we want you to be able to get all your work done inside Slack instead of having to go back and forth between disparate systems. We believe that context switching from Slack to Salesforce to Zendesk to Google, we feel like that context switching disrupts productivity. And if you're able to do all your work inside Slack, you can have a more simple, more pleasant, and more productive work experience. So with that mission in mind, uh, we believe we're creating an operating system for teams. And that means it's not just a chat application, though that's the primary functionality that we want to market with. But it's an operating system in the sense that it interacts with other uh, products in, uh, in the marketplace where you can, just like on your Windows desktop, you can click into various applications. Inside Slack, the vision is that you'll be able to click into various other applications. Um, so Slack is where people, people, not only people work together, but it's also where apps work to work together. It's where the Trello app, the Dropbox app, the Asana app, the Pick Your Endpoint app, uh, can be down by the user. So it's where people and apps work together. And today we have over 500 apps in Slack app directory. Um, Slack is also notably one of the fastest growing business applications. Uh, we recently published that we have 3 million daily active users and 1 million concurrent users on the platform. Uh, and all this has happened over the course of two years. Uh, we believe we're on a trajectory to do something very special. Uh, today, 90% of all the teams on Slack use an app. So again, if you're a developer in the audience, that means 90% of those 3 million people, they're using an external service that's plugged into Slack. So if that's not motivation to plug into Slack, I don't know what is. Uh, not only that, but 77% of the Fortune 100, these large companies, are using Slack. And um, there's, uh, there's a lot of usage from non tech people, so a lot of people think that Slack is just for the IT uh, uh, individual, but sales people, marketers, customer service people, everybody throughout the organization has found value in Slack already. Um, Slack is internationally used right now. We've got users in Tokyo and uh, uh, in, in Bangalore. In fact, those are some of the top countries, India and Japan are some of the top countries for Slack, um, and many, many other cities across the world as well. Um, We've already seen some signs of early success in the Slack ecosystem. Uh, for example, Trello has been installed by over 100,000 teams. Uh, a startup called Robot, which didn't exist before Slack. Robot exists only on Slack. It's been already installed by 2,000 teams. That has been successful with others as well. Um, Slack has an app directory, as I mentioned. This is where we highlight all our integrations. And we feature the best ones. So that red box shows you an opportunity to get featured if you build something special. And then there's a kind of a second tier if you also build something special, but maybe it's not quite ready for the prime time. Uh, in addition, Slack will also has a developer blog uh, where we can provide you visibility as well. And finally, we also communicate about our integrations with our sales and customer success team. So if you build a badass integration, not only will we market it, but we'll also tell our salespeople about it and they'll sell it on our behalf effectively. Um, and then finally, any user inside Slack can go slash apps and they'll actually see inside Slack the top apps uh, that they're interested in. So plenty of ways for a Slack user to discover a third-party app. So if you're in the audience and you build a third-party app, we will help you get discovered. And that's a one big takeaway if anything else that I want you to take on with you. Um, finally, Slack has a, a public roadmap uh, on Trello where, where we talk about the various features you're going to build. So if you're a developer and engineer, we're not hiding anything. There's transparency about where we're building. 
And um, we also have an idea board for various uh, uses and features that you might want to build. Um, so please check out the idea boards to figure out how to allocate your resources to get the most out of Slack. So I'd actually could go on uh, much longer, but uh, I'm going to keep myself accountable just like I keep the startups accountable. I'm going to cut this off for five, five minutes, but I'd love to open it up to questions about Slack and the developer platform. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so the question is, like, how did you guys get so many users if you're just like a run-of-the-mill messaging service? Uh, and it's true, there are a lot of messaging tools out there. Um, I think what makes Slack unique, uh, what, what kind of gave it that initial boost, is the fact that the user interface is sufficiently friendly that anybody throughout the organization can use it. So uh, typically your IT team is uh, the most technologically savvy and is an early adopter, but Slack is sufficiently fun and friendly that anybody throughout the organization uh, finds, you, finds the ability to get started very quickly. In, internally at Slack, we say that it's used wall to wall throughout the organization. And that's really what's very important. This ability to work wall to wall allows a new employee that joins the company to get up to speed and become an expert in any given area. They can jump into the sales channel and see what's going on in sales and, and everything else. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of one answer. Uh, you've, Stuart Butterfield, who's our CEO, also admits that there's a lot of luck to it. Um, and so it's a combination of good UI, a little bit of luck, and being in the right place at the right time. But I think going forward, what's going to set Slack apart is that we have the best APIs, and we have the richest developer ecosystem, so that um, when you are a startup or you're an existing tool, if you don't integrate with Slack, you're going to feel like you're missing out. So we, we feel like um, Slack is the primary place like, to, to integrate with and uh, access the business user. Uh, I'll do one up right here. Yeah, so does Slack have a monetization model for people that use this platform? Uh, so today, uh, we already see some startups putting the Slack integration behind a paywall. So if, um, I can't think of a, well, Robot. Uh, Robot is a, this like HR, plot, HR tool that's built exclusively for Slack. It's got a free tier, but then if you have you know uh, more than X number of users, I don't remember the exact cutoff, you actually have to pay them. So the Slack integration is being put behind a paywall. Um, that's one example, and I think there will be more that emerge. We're still early days on this. Uh, but there are definitely people already making money from that. Uh, more questions? Oh, yeah, back there. I'm just curious, what's uh, some of the lodges that uh, you using uh, using Slack? Um, we've seen, so, so today, uh, if, like as I mentioned earlier, 77% 77, 77 of the Fortune 500 already use Slack, so there's some of your usual suspects. Um, that being said, Slack does have a limitation today. I think you can have no more than 5,000 seats inside of a team. Uh, and to address that, we're, Slack is releasing an enterprise product in Q4 of this year, and it will allow you to go beyond that 5,000 um, limitation. But today, from a technology, technology infrastructure perspective, we were limited, uh, and that should go away later this year. Right, we got maybe time for one or two more questions. Yeah, Bert? What's the best way to start trying it out? Is there some kind of trial where a small team can use it out? Yeah, great, great question. So uh, Slack is free to use. It's a free new business model, so you can just go to slack.com and sign up. Uh, and then if you're a developer, um, you can go to slack.com uh, or developer.slack.com slash developer, and over there you can access the API documentation as well as get your API token and start building. Uh, it's actually pretty quick. You know, I'm not technical. I built an integration last weekend. It took a little bit of pain, but um, if I could do it, I think anybody could do it. Um, so yeah, very easy to get started. And um, maybe the last question. Okay, uh, we'll we'll say. Uh, okay, we got one there. So there's a lot of information in all of these channels, right? As the organization grows, is there a way, or do you guys have an API to mine that stuff individually by the organization? So let's say my organization uses Slack, you know, they run with the channels, blah blah blah. Is there a way that I could, is there an API that's available to me that I can mine uh, the, map, the content within the various channels? So whatever my objective is, I can get some data points around it. Yeah, so the, the question is, 
you know, there's a lot of communication that happens in Slack and it's a huge data set. Can you extract that data through an API and then manipulate it whichever way you want? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, in that case, you probably build what's called a custom integration. A custom integration is something that's used just for your team as opposed to a directory app, which is used by everybody. Um, and the reason for building a custom integration versus an app is because you know, if you're if you're a third-party developer, you're going to like Disney or IBM or some big company. You're like, hey, my app will take all your data and we'll we promise we won't leak it. We'll do some analysis on it. Like that's probably not going to fly very well. But if you are a custom developer for for your specific team, you can build this integration. You can extract it. You can do natural language processing. You can do machine learning. You can extract insights and uh, certainly deliver some unique value uh, to your team. So uh, definitely possible. And uh, happy to talk to you more about that. Um, so with that said, uh, I'm going to 